Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. All we like sheep have gone astray, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come unto thee. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. All we like sheep have gone astray, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of our soul. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 18th and 19th chapters. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley, where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place where Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, having procured a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that would happen to him, came forward and said to them, whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. So he asked them again, Whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. Of those whom you gave me, I have lost not one. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. First they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had advised the Jews that it would be expedient that one man should die for the people. Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he entered with Jesus into the court of the high priest, but Peter stood outside at the door. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the servant girl who kept watch at the door and brought Peter in. The servant girl at the door said to Peter, You also are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the servants and officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing and warming themselves. 
Peter also was with them, standing and warming himself. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered them, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple, where all Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said these things, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If what I said is wrong, bear witness about the wrong. But if what I said is right, why do you strike me? Annas then sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself, so they said to him, You also are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it, and at once a rooster crowed.
Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters so that they would not be defiled, but could eat the Passover. So Pilate went outside to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting but I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him. But you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. So do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. For I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have authority to release you and authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given you from above. Therefore he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the Stone Pavement, 
and in Aramaic, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. The reproach hath broken my heart, and I am full of heaviness, and I look it for some to take pity, but there was none, and for And held it to his mouth. 
When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And again, another scripture says, they will look on him whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there.
mercy and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This service is part of the three-day observance of Christ's Passover. We are tempted to think lightly of our own sins. But Jesus' crucifixion is the sacrifice of atonement for those very sins. As it has been said, he is the righteous servant who justifies the many by his innocent suffering and death. He bears our griefs and carries our sorrows. He is wounded for our transgressions. He is crushed for our iniquities. He suffers our chastisement so that with his stripes we are healed. As the Son of God, he fulfills the law for us in human flesh, and so fulfills the scriptures. For as St. Paul told the Corinthians, in Christ God was reconciling the whole world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. Even as we repent now, we know how Christ's Passover ends. The Lamb of God dies and lives again. May the good result of this work of Christ give you joy as kneeling or bowing. You behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the salvation of the world. We adore you, O Lord, for by the wood of your cross, joy has come into the world. May this peace that passeth all human understanding keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen, amen. Brethren, let us pray for the whole Christian church that our Lord God would vouchsafe to defend it against all the assaults and temptations of the adversary and to keep it perpetually upon the true foundation, Jesus Christ. Almighty and everlasting God, who has revealed thy glory to all nations in Jesus Christ and the word of his truth, he, we beseech thee, in safety the works of thy mercy, so that thy church, spread throughout all nations, may serve thee in true faith and persevere in the confession of thy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the ministers of the word, for all the states of men in the church, and for all the people of God. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified. Receive the supplications and prayers which we offer before thee for all the states of men in thy holy church, that every member of the same, in his vocation and ministry, may truly and godly serve thee. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for our catechumens that our Lord God would open their hearts in the door of his mercy, that having received the remission of all their sins by the washing of regeneration, they may be mindful of their baptismal covenant and evermore be found in Christ Jesus our Lord. Almighty and everlasting God, who dost always multiply thy church, and with thy light and grace dost strengthen the hearts of those whom thou hast regenerated, Confirming unto them thy covenant and faithfulness, grant unto our catechumens increased both of faith and knowledge, that they may rejoice in their baptism and really and heartily renew their covenant with thee. Amen. Let us pray for all in authority, and especially for the government of the United States, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. O merciful Father in heaven, who holdest in thy hand all the might of man, 
and who has ordained the powers that be for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well, and of whom is all rule and authority in the kingdoms of the world, we humbly beseech thee, graciously regard thy servants, the President of the United States, the Governor of this Commonwealth, our judges and magistrates, and all the rulers of the earth, that all who receive the sword as thy ministers may bear it according to thy commandment. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, our Lord God Almighty, that he would deliver the world from all error, take away disease, ward off famine, set free all those who are in chains and bondage, grant a safe return to the wayfarers, health to the sick, and to our mariners, a harbor of security. Almighty and everlasting God, the consolation of the sorrowful and the strength of the weak, may the prayers of them that in any tribulation or distress cry unto thee, graciously come before thee, so that in all their necessities they may mark and receive thy manifold help and comfort. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for peace, that we may come to the knowledge of God's holy word and walk before him as becometh Christians. Almighty and everlasting God, King of glory and Lord of heaven and earth, by whose spirit all things are governed, by whose providence all things are ordered, who art the God of peace and the author of all concord, grant us, we beseech thee, thy heavenly peace and concord, that we may serve thee in true fear to the praise and glory of thy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for our enemies, that God will remember them in mercy and graciously vouchsafe unto them such things as are both needful for them and profitable unto their salvation. O almighty everlasting God, who through thine only Son, our blessed Lord, has commanded us to love our enemies, to do good to them that hate us, and to pray for them that persecute us, we earnestly beseech thee that by thy gracious visitation all our enemies may be led to true repentance and may have the same love, and be of one accord, and of one mind and heart with us, and with thy whole Christian church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the fruits of the earth, that God would send down his blessing upon them, and graciously dispose our hearts to enjoy them in submission to his holy will. O Lord, Father Almighty, who by thy word hast created, and dost bless and uphold all things. We pray thee so to reveal unto us thy word, our Lord Jesus Christ, that he dwelling in our hearts, we may by thy grace be made deep to receive thy blessing on all the fruits of the earth, and whatsoever pertains to our bodily need. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Finally, let us pray for all those things for which our Lord would have us ask, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 